Hi, my name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers and the Facebook group Sweet Pea Papers. Um, first thing I want to mention, and I always forget this, is that if you want a step-by-step -step PDF with um, all the instructions on how to make, build and make each page, um, just join the Facebook group and when the last uh, video gets released in the flip through, um, or when the flip through gets released, then you get a free copy of that entire tutorial in the form of a PDF. Yay! So, um, I want to talk real quick about some of the different papers we're going to use. And the reason I'm going to do this is because it's going to kind of come up. So, the first thing I have is some writing paper. I don't know, can you tell from the glare? It looks almost like um, old paper or almost leather paper. Um, the brand name is um, Kidapoc, I believe. It's spelled K I D E P O C H. And this is the only tag that's on it. I did get it on Amazon. So, you know, you can look it up by the brand name and um, you should be able to find it. This is thin, like typing paper, um, but we can use it for writing paper along with the, um, I'm sorry, I just noticed this big bruise on my finger, um, along with the um, writing cards. I got some craft out, but this paper that we're using is thinner, and so I think the craft is going to be too heavy. So we'll set that to the side. We might could use it for a writing card. I don't know. The color is different than what the other writing cards, but this is eclectic, so that means a mix and match. I looked it up. Um, pulling from different sources. Um, we are pulling from one source, but we're just using a bunch of different papers. Okay, so there's that. Um, I have some coffee dyed paper. Now this I sprayed with um, this, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, not glitter, but um, metallic um, oil, not oil. Okay, let me try that again. I sprayed this with the metallic paint alcohol ink that I made and I won't be using that or this specific paper in this but we will be using coffee dyed paper. I've got some cream card stock. We'll be using this a lot for the writing cards. I know it's not the same color as this but once we put paper on it um, then you'll only see the back side. We need some place for you to write. Okay and then of course our manila folders and then we are uh, going to use these papers today. I just pulled a bunch. I have no idea if we're going to use them all. Um, but I just got these different papers out of the pad. So um, I may have to put you on hold and get more paper. Um, I'm going to try to do um, the four flaps that we have off of page seven. So we'll see how that goes. We're going to need some uh, book binding thread. Yes, I know. Why, you might ask. I'm not going to tell you. Um, so, let me, let me move these papers over out of the way, something, so I can put my notes over here. All right. So, I've gone over the papers. So, the next thing I want to tell you is that you're going to kill me just you're going to kill me. I um, had this open and I noticed it was having a lot of trouble laying completely flat. Um, some of the pages are but they will be fixed uh, just from the weight of the book. You can see this flap that was sticking up doesn't stick up anymore. Um, the weight of the paper plus having it closed and the weight of the book. Once we get the book done you can put it under something heavy for a day or so. Um, anyway but this wasn't laying flat and um, whatever I was going to use was not going to make any difference probably. So um, 
what I decided to do was I cut a half an inch off and that made it not butt up against this so much so that's um, the farthest part out which meant that I had to move this magnet I had to move it farther in because once I cut the half inch off this was too close to the edge to um, to cover with the paper so I'm sorry I also completely removed the magnet from the very back of the book because we're going to put it somewhere else uh, once we put what we're going to put on these pages um, I don't believe the magnet was going to hold and so instead of wasting magnets we're going to put them somewhere we're going to put it somewhere else which as you can see is right here okay and that will hold that shut does it now because um, well the other magnet isn't there so what we're going to do we're going to start oh I labeled these just for the purpose of this tutorial I labeled them A B C and D okay so just for reference so when I say um, you know flip A then you'll know what I'm talking about okay so what we're going to do on this one is we're going to add a side tuck we're going to use a piece with the tab now I wonder if I want the tab at the bottom or the tab at the top I think I want the tab at the top so it's not going to be that thick plus this is kind of fuzzy on the edge from that other cutter so first of all let's mark it's kind of fuzzy on the top too all right so let's um, trim just a hair off the top let's go ahead and do that first before we measure anything because I want to keep the notch I just don't want that fuzzy edge okay okay so we just cut that little teeny bit off now let's go ahead and measure I kind of like it this deep it's going to be a tuck and not a pocket you just tuck something in there all right let's cut it down just a little bit um, Wow the top still doesn't look that great and I just cut it with a good blade hmm looks fine on this side so I guess we're putting the tab at the bottom can't keep trimming off well I mean we could but then we wouldn't have a tab would we okay so let's trim this here but if I draw a line on it then we're gonna see it aren't we well I'm just gonna have to make it very light so that I can erase it and then I think I think I'm gonna leave it this wide so let's trim the top off Where our very very light mark is oh yeah okay. right obviously this is a scrap so what we're going to do is we're going to put it on but we're only going to glue the bottom in this side we're not going to glue the top okay that way uh, since it's a flip out we don't have to worry about it being just a regular tuck with something stuck in there and having it fall out now before we do that though we need to cover this and we're going to cover it all the way across this time so that we can't see through and see that the paper ends that's why oh let me show you I ended up I put this little tuck on the back I put it the opposite way okay and then I ended up covering this I didn't really want to because I didn't want to cover the other ones um, but we might be able to get away with not covering the other ones because um, they don't all have to be the same 
So, um, that was what was left over from the last one. This just looks like I did not glue it on properly, to tell you the truth. Um, it looks straight. Hmm. Could be because of all the folds underneath, because I have the whole thing folded over instead of like this, which is the way it's going to really be. All right, so we're going to paper this This is making me crazy. Yeah, you can see I glued it crooked. All right. Well, it's on there now, isn't it? Okay. I wish I'd have noticed it earlier. So don't you do it. You can see. You can see I push this side and this sticks up and then push this side. There's just a curve to it. Anyway, so let's pick out a paper for here. Now, I'm not necessarily wanting to use one of my more interesting papers because we're going to be covering half of it up, at least. So maybe we'll go with this. Or we could go with this, which I do not like. <laughs> but that's all the more reason to cover it half the way up. So let's do it. Let's go for the wood. Okay. So we're going to pick our size here. We are going to have to cover the pages as we go. Um, I'm going to show you one or two of the writing cards and then um, I'm just going to say make a writing card for this page. I'm not going to uh, make a writing card on screen for every single page. You're welcome. All right, so this goes to here. And it goes to here. So, do I want to cut it half this way or this way? I'm going to cut it in half this way first. Because this is the longer or the quote unquote bigger cut. So then we'll have a bigger square left over up here for our scrap. Okay, so we've got that. And then, did I cut off my line? Looks like my line is right there. If it isn't, there's three pages of the same thing in this pad. No, that was it. Okay, let's glue this down. filled up my bottle. I literally did it while I was editing the video before this. When I heard myself say, you know, I really need to fill this bottle. I paused the video right there and went and filled the bottle. Now, I put 
Vaseline on here on the threads and I put Vaseline on the main bottle on the threads just like I was talking to you guys about and it keeps it from getting glued shut now filling it from here it's much easier than filling it from there however this one's Vaseline too because for the longest time that one was stuck it came unstuck I have no idea why it came unstuck let's put this here put our tuck on now are we going to cover this one I really don't want to I'm not going to cover it and then if it if I keep looking at this one along with this one then then I'll go back and cover this um, I might just because of the nature of what we're doing with all the different papers but uh, we'll see okay so we're going to glue the bottom and the long side and that'll give us our tuck except I just did the wrong end and now the tabs at the top okay it's all right and there's Oz see I like the look of that with the manila folder I do, I do. So we're just going to move on. Okay. Flat B. Okay, now with this one, the first thing we're going to do is cover the page. Then we're going to make a card for the front not just a writing card but like a card that opens and then we're going to um, tie it shut so the first thing we need to do is figure out what paper we want to cover it with let's pick another ugly one <laughs> go figure okay this one makes a good background Okay, so we'll do this, and we'll do this, and see these are six by sixes, so what I'm trying to do, we're close to it. So I'm trying to end up with as close as I can to four six by sixes as I can well that one's actually five and a half by five
with this thin a paper, um, I most of the time I don't glue the middle of my papers anyway. I know most people do. Um, I haven't had any trouble. I have books that are several years old and I have absolutely no trouble with the papers. So I don't know if I'm lucky. I mean, I've used 65 pound paper. I've used 110. Um, gosh, this wrinkle really put a wrinkle in my measuring, didn't it? Well, if it's going to be crooked, let's make it crooked evenly. Pull this down a little bit if I can. Looks like it's already stuck on there. And a little glue. It doesn't really matter in the scheme of things if there's a little teeny tiny little, but it is shiny. So, okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to need a manila folder. A piece of manila folder to make the card. Okay. I wonder if I should use cream. No. So we want the card. Let's see, this is five, right? Because it was five by five and a half. Mm, this is five and three eighths. Oh, for the paper. So let's say, let's say we make the card four, four wide. This wasn't five and a half, it was six and a half. All right, so let's make it a four by six. I'm going to use this scrap here. If I hadn't cut it off, I could have used the hinge, huh? wonder if I should use another folder just so I can use the hinge. It's already on there and not try to fold. I mean, it's not like we're not going to go through like a ton of these anyway. So... What did we want? Four by five. Uh, didn't write it down. Yeah, we wanted four. That was six and a half. Yeah, four by five. Four inches wide by five inches tall. We want this to be four inches wide. Just tall. Yep, that's fine. Okay, now I'm not planning on covering the inside of the card. It's going to be a writing card. Um, you know, I wonder if we should stencil on the inside though. Hmm. I can do it after if I decide. So it's up to you whether you want to do something on the inside or not. If we paper it, then there's nowhere to write. 
You know what I mean? This is a paper stack, which is a paper pad, except it doesn't have all the papers in the back that have the little cards and stuff. So it's not like I can stick a little writing card in here. I could stick a little piece of colored paper in here. Where, or oh, where are my scraps? What about this to match the page? Don't like it. I could do this. I could do that. Then you could still write on both sides. But it's not just plain whatever in the middle on both sides. So let's do this. And we'll do this here. Then we have to think of something that we're going to cover the outside with, the front. And we're going to go with something different. I don't want it to be like each section has certain papers. You know what I mean? Like a theme in each section. I mean, I could. I could. But I don't really want to. I know it seems like I am right now. Um, but I think if we look at it as a whole, other than this matching that other paper and that little tuck spot matching the brown and the brown, um, I don't think that... It looks, you know, like everything is mix is match. Because we have more than one sh that sheet of this paper. So we can put more of this, you know, in the front of the book or whatever. Believe me, you are going to use enough paper in this book and enough manila folders. And it's going to make your head spin. Um, this is not going to be a short series. Why does everything seem small? What is up with that? Is it my eyeballs? Are my eyes small? <laughs> Alright, so now let's cover this. And I want to go with something completely different. And now for something completely different. So let's see what I pulled. Get this one. That would be kind of cool. Got that one. I'd rather use this on something bigger. The pattern is so big. Maybe we could go with this. Let me put you on hold for just one second. Okay. So, um, of course he starts barking as soon as I turn the recording back on. done before you know who starts doing you know what at who knows what <laughs> who knows what he's barking at I never know well occasionally I know usually if I go look and look at the window or the sliding door actually I have no idea there's nothing there I can't point to something and go aha 
Now, occasionally, you know, it's happened a couple times. My apartment faces the playground. Well, they took all the play playground equipment out because it was no good anymore. It, you know, there was a possibility the kids could get hurt. And um, so they took it all down. So now it's just an open area. And the people that live straight across the square from me have a pit bull mix, which is the sweetest dog you would ever want to meet. So sweet. Um, but Oz doesn't know that. <laughs> Oz is too busy barking at the dog. Now, they've let it out several times without it being on any kind of leash or anything. And it showed up at my door, my sliding door, and wanted to come in, which was hysterical. But um, Oz was having none of it <laughs> and just about lost his mind. And I went outside to take her home. And um, how is it this paper is crooked? It's not. The top of the manila folder is crooked. Okay. Well, I'm just here to say it's not my fault. <laughs> when we all know that it is. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some book binding thread. We want enough to go around the back, come to the front, and then be able to tie it. So we're just going to hold it across here and then hold out enough to make a tie and then hold it out enough to make a tie. We're going to cut it, but this is probably more than I need. Probably. So we're going to glue it to the back, across the middle. Or the guesstimated middle. Smooth that out so the glue is all over it. All over it. And all over your fingers. Is that going to tie shut? Let's check it now. Wow, that is cutting it close, isn't it? I don't know. My fingers are so cold they're purple. So I couldn't really tell you. Yeah, that is close. I'm going to say too short. I call too short. All right. It's not like I won't use it on something. So don't don't get upset and go, oh, she's wasting it. For Christ's sakes. Doesn't that seem like an excess of what we need? <laughs> That's my neighbor going up and down the stairs with his dog. He got a new pit bull. Now, you know, let me just throw this out there. I love pit bulls. I have no problem with pit bulls, but they're big. They're big dogs. And supposedly the complex here has a 40 pound weight limit on dogs. Now, I don't know about you, 
but I have never seen a pit bull, unless it was a puppy, that weighed 40 pounds. That's much better. This side had dried up too much. Let's just let that sit for a minute and let it dry. Well, actually, we're going to glue the card onto the page right here, right in the middle. So let's go ahead and put glue on it. I don't know why I'm whispering. I'm sneaking up on the card. Go ahead and put glue on it. I am literally recording at noon, not midnight. I know you guys all thought it was midnight. It's okay. You're forgiven. Okay, now we're going to put this on the mid on the. I'm going to say approximate middle. In fact, I don't want it in the middle. I think I might want it over here. I think I do. Now we're not going to tie it right now because I don't want the knot to be there while we're working on the rest. But anyway, this is how it's going to look and then it's going to tie shut. Okay, so it'll be tied shut right there. Believe it or not, that's almost still too short. <laughs> for me, for my little cold, numb hands. Okay, so that's what we're going to do there. So now let's flip this over. So you got A and B done already. Now for C, we're going to cover the page and then we're going to put a diagonal pocket to help cover the lump from the magnet. And the reason I'm doing it that way isn't because the magnet's going to super show, but this is thin paper and I'm just kind of worried about um, the magnet showing. So we will know once I glue this paper down. See, that's going to be cool. That'll be fine. That's a little dark, the whole page. Now that I look at it, could have been a little bit brighter. Something on it could have been brighter. All right, so let's cover this page. Um, a diagonal pocket covers up a lot, whereas this one okay, that's why we put the magnet on the back was to hold the whole flap down. Oh, it's not going to, I can't tell because there's no magnet back there. So far, it's holding that shut. It's definitely holding this shut. Okay. The 
the worst that can happen is that it doesn't hold. I'm tired of moving the magnet around. If I put it where I was thinking of putting it, then it's not going to hold this shut. It's only going to hold this shut. You know what I mean? If I put the magnet here, it's not going to hold this part shut. You see that, how it flipped over? <laughs> so here we go again. Magnet merry-go-round. Let's make sure this is long enough. Well, it is for any normal human being. Yes, it's long enough. Look at me. Look at me go. <laughs> think that'll be fine cool okay so now we're working in here so we're gonna put a diagonal pocket let's make that the pocket it seems kind of groovy and Let's go to a new page. Get this flannel shirt off. I got the heater going, and I never would have thought at the setting that it's on that it would warm up this room so much. Okay, so let's take a look real quick in here. I don't want to set this on here. I mean, I've heard of putting weight on the book, but that's a little ridiculous. And let's... Oh, we've got music paper. That's too much like that. What about this for the background paper? I forgot to mention I have two of these pads, I think, maybe. Oh, I might have done that in video one. Okay. Let's see if I have a scrap for this, but I don't think I do. Yeah, no. There's a hair in my box. Yep, hair in with the scraps. What about this? Why? Look at that. That will definitely make a diagonal pocket. So, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut this diagonally and then I'm going to cut the points off and then it'll give us a little flat on either side. I'm going to have a big crash over here in a minute because I got that big pad of paper sitting on top of those two plastic boxes. Okay, to cut it diagonal, we're just going to put the point right up here in the line, then just swing this around so that this point is on the line. Double check that this one hasn't moved. I'm just going to kind of have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Make sure you hold the paper still.
you know what I did. No, oh, it worked. Okay, so we got this. Um, actually, oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Duh. All right, so let's just cut the little tippy tip off. We're going to need to put our backing paper down first. Put this over here with our scraps. So we'll put this on. Now, is this the one that doesn't lay flat? Seems to be alright from this side. I actually like this paper. If you could see it up close, it really, really mimics lace. It mimics it very well. Let's put it that way. I should have finished that sentence. It's gone from 63 degrees, or no, 65 degrees, which is really cold for me. But it's gone from 65 degrees. I think the top of this folder is crooked. I think that's the problem I ran into last time on the other side. Anyway, it's now 73 in here, and it's only been an hour. So that little space heater that's not even in this room, it's in the other room, but it's pointed into this room, has raised the temperature in this room by 8 degrees in no time at all. I do like the feel of this paper. It's like really silky, even though I don't particularly care for working with thin paper. I know a lot of people that print out their digitals on typing paper, wheat paper. And I'm not really sure that I could do that. I think it's cool that they can. It's just my own personal you know, problem. One of many. <laughs> One of many. I guess that's not the piece. I guess this is the piece. You almost don't want to cover it up, huh? You know, if we leave that, um, pocket as manila, then we could leave this as manila as well. I'm not sure I like that against the white though. Hmm. I mean against the lace. I think it would have been maybe okay at not. So we are going to cover it. Boy. Well, we'll just have to cut a square. and then work from there. It's going to be very frustrating. So, um, we may gl uh, glue the pocket on. Um, I may just trace the pocket. I might stop talking and actually glue the paper. I'm so sorry. But if I trace the pocket and then just cut it out a little bit inside of the tracing, 
and you can't you got to remember you can't flip the paper over or your um, angles will be backwards because we cut the corners off had I left the corners on then we could have measured you know the uh, rectangle and then cut the uh, corners off so that's my fault for not being forward thinking and thinking ahead Now this is a little crooked, but I'm going to make the part that you can see straight and then this little corner that's going to be crooked because of the crookedness of this, we will cover up with this pocket. Except all of a sudden, oh. So let's oh, tracing it under that is going to be a nightmare. Oh, thank goodness the heater turned off. I think what I'll do I know this seems silly, but I, I just I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see this on here to, tr to trace it. Let me, let me give it a whirl. I may do something else on the page just because um, I know this seems silly, but I've already Okay, let me measure this a little bit smaller. a little bit smaller and then if we cut it out square I should be able to lay on it and just draw the straight line let me do that first that seems like an easier way oh except for doing it this way I don't mind the text being sideways and stuff, but I really don't want it upside down. You know, the paper has a direction. So I want the paper to be a little bit smaller. A little bit shorter. Let's see. I think I'm doing this backwards because I want it to be smaller. Why can't I figure this out? I'm having a brain freeze. All right. I will figure that out. I know you guys are all laughing at me. Occasionally, I'll get to something easy. And then, all of a sudden, you know what? All I need is a triangle. I don't have to cut the points off. All I need is a triangle. And put the triangle in the center. So, 
let's see, it went up that far. And it went out this far before I cut the points off. I'm going to have to uh, edit this so you're not laughing at me the whole time. measuring this on my cutter. Since the words run this way, I'm going to cut it this way first. Draw the diagonal. I made sure that the um now <clears throat> this is gonna be too big. So I'm gonna cut it just a little bit smaller than this diagonal. Then we'll see how bad I did this. This is just so you can see how nutty this can be. And I almost got it. So I'm trim the bottom off a little bit. Wow. Okay. Well. Just like a hair. I forgot, didn't I? Well, the chandelier's right side up. That's all I got to say. I can't believe I wasted 20 minutes on this. Really. I mean, seriously. It's like, seriously, Terry? Seriously? You're supposed to be the one that knows how to do this. I always have trouble um, with shapes like this for some reason. 
Ooh, I think that was my package. I'm going to put you on hold for just one second. Okay, I thought that was my magnets, so that was why I went and looked. But it wasn't. It was my two new fancy extension cords. So I'm probably going to cut out a bunch of this that uh, where I was fumbling around. So if you see a jump in the video, you'll see, you'll figure out what, what the deal is. Um, because, yeah, I ended up with it the other way than what I started out with. Somehow I ended up Yeah, somehow I ended up with it being facing this way. It was the way I cut it. Well, I can glue it on. And I could always trim it right there. Well, no, then the paper wouldn't work right. See, here I am fiddling around again as if I wasn't on camera. So there's probably going to be 10 or 15 minutes in the center that's just going to be gone because um, oh for for crepe sakes that's what we'll say Look at that. Okay. Well, after all that, it actually turned out correctly. It's just going to be on this side. The word tradition's upside down, but the tag and the chandelier is right side up. The L's going that way. So, we're going to do this and this. We're going to do the two longs, long sides at the 90 degree angle. And then we're going to be done. I was going to do the next one. I was going to do D and then we'd have all the flaps done. But we'll start with D on the next video. That'll give me a chance to think up some more cra craziness for you guys. so far over that it won't fold. That was another reason I wanted it to be on that side. No, nope, that's going to be fine. I'm just moving up just a little bit. makes me crazy when things aren't straight and the fact that this got cut crooked somehow and it's all glued already so there's nothing I can do about it is making me insane all right so um, in the next video we'll make one writing card so you can see how um, and then we'll do this side which I do already have planned um, and then um, we'll have this whole section done we'll just need more writing cards which I will do. I'm not going to get behind this time and have to sit and make a bunch of writing cards. I'm just not. I refuse. Okay, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next video and that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Bye-bye.